This is an urgent situation. I have all the details and everything you need to know right here in this video. Let's get right into it. All right, so I do have a number of updates to talk through in this video, so let's work our way through these one at a time. All right, so a new report that was just released is suggesting millions of people are likely going to be falling into what they're now calling food poverty. Let me explain this. So basically, here's what's happening. As prices continue to rise on literally everything right now, unfortunately, a lot of people are being faced with the difficult decision of, do we pay the rent or mortgage this month? Do we pay the utilities this month and keep the lights on? Or do we pay for all the food and necessities that we actually need? Well, unfortunately, a lot of people are paying for the rent and the mortgage, keeping the lights on, and therefore sacrificing all the food that they need or that they and their families actually need. Well, as a result of this, the report continues to go on to say exactly what I've been talking about here over the last few days, which is apparently across the country right now, all of these food banks and food pantries are starting to see a massive influx of more people coming in right now simply because of this exact reason. Not enough money, therefore can't pay all the bills and sacrificing food as a result. So a lot of people are going out to food pantries and food banks to actually fill in all the gaps that they need right now. Which quick side note, if you happen to be in one of these situations, please go ahead and take advantage of these programs. That is why they have these food banks. That is why they have these food pantries. They have them there for you to take advantage of in the event that you fall into one of these situations. So if that is your situation right now, please take advantage of the resources that you do have available to you. Also, the report goes on to say that this would simply be fixed with just some simple action out of Congress. That's literally all it would take. Congress to come forward and approve some additional funding, some additional money, relief for the low income and the fixed income, struggling Americans right now. That's all it would really take is Congress just to push through some legislation and boom, they've got it done, right? Yeah, it seems pretty easy, but we'll have to see what Congress actually does. Now, I do have a bunch more reports for you to go over in this video, but really quickly before we get into those, if you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button right down below the video. I am your one and only daily advocate and I'm doing research literally all day, every single day, watching everything closely and bringing you all those latest updates right here in these videos so you can stay updated with everything going on ver during this very, very confusing time. So again, thanks so much for joining me. I truly do appreciate it. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button right down below if you haven't done so yet. And let's get into the rest of the updates. All right, so another report that was recently released, and I think this one is kind of interesting as well, not necessarily in a good way. Here's what it's showing that 18% of people have zero money left after they pay for their regular monthly expenses and necessities. Now, when I say necessities, basically exactly everything we were just talking about with that last report food, mortgage, rent, utilities, uh, car insurance, gas for the car, things like this, just the basic necessities that generally sucks up the vast majority of your money probably within the first week or so of the month, right? The rent and the mortgage, these things take a lot of the money. Um, but again, anyway, the report goes on to say that 18% of people literally have zero money left after they cover just the basic necessities. That's not a good position to be in. But here's something else that's also a little bit alerting that we need to watch closely. This 18% figure is actually up 5% since pre-COVID, so back in late, to, um, late 2019, early 2020, this percentage was actually at 13%. So prior to COVID, it was sitting at 13%. Now here we are a couple years later and we're sitting at 18%. So an additional 5% of people are basically put in this position, not a good position to be in. And I totally recognize a lot of people here in this community are probably in this situation on a regular basis because I get it. Living on a small fixed income is very, very challenging especially now as prices are significantly higher than what they were a year ago and even two years ago. Prices are significantly different. Could you imagine if we could go back two years ago, um, kind of prior to the COVID situation, I know it was more than two years ago, but kind of roughly two years ago, prior to the COVID situation and all this massive inflation, could you imagine what we, how we would feel if we went out to the stores today and actually did some shopping? We'd feel like, wow, Everything is so cheap, right? <laughs> wow, it would be, it'd feel like, you know, like, wow, we're getting a deal on everything. Everything is on sale these days, right? 
So that's just how much prices have gone up on literally everything. Anyway, let me talk about a couple of the reports. As long as we're talking about food and things like this, let me talk about one more report that just came up as well. Now, as we know right now, Democrats want to talk about and pass another reconciliation bill. Well, another report that just popped up said, could uh, universal school meals be the next anchor for the next reconciliation bill? Now, here's the thing. What they mean by anchor is simply... They need like one big provision, like one big like kind of goal to work toward. And then they use that as kind of the anchor of the reconciliation bill. And then they kind of build the form around it, right? So it's kind of what they were thinking with this whole idea of universal school meals. Could this potentially be the anchor of the next reconciliation bill? At this point, nobody really knows. But um, just like I talked about in a video yesterday, Chuck Schumer and Joe Manchin are talking about potential tax increases. Well, maybe they'll wrap something like that around the next reconciliation bill because they already know that if they do some tax increases, it has to be done through reconciliation because they're not going to get the support that they need in the Senate to get a bill like that through. So anyway, as long as we're talking about Joe Manchin, let me throw another quick uh, little tidbit out there that you might want to recognize and know about. So as we all know, uh, Joe Manchin is the moderate Democrat, right? He's kind of sitting on the fence. He uh, he sides a lot with Republicans, and um, but he, he identifies as a Democrat, but at the same time, he also does agree a lot with Republicans. However, here's what's interesting. And again, I want to make it very clear. I do not take political sides in my videos. I pretty much hammer on both sides equally, right? <laughs> if you've been watching a while now, you know that I, I go after both sides at pretty much the same. Anyway... Since the president has taken office a little over a year ago, Joe Manchin's approval rating has gone up by 16 points. Yeah, that's a lot in the last year. At the same time, the president's approval rating is at the lowest numbers we've seen, sub 40, uh, 40%. So again, I'm not taking sides here. I'm simply reporting the news and the information that is coming out. So apparently a lot of people are kind of jumping on the Joe Manchin bandwagon and um, kind of supporting what he's doing or maybe supporting what he's repealing more like. Again, not really sure. Didn't see a breakdown as far as the reporting on all of this, as far as... Um, you know, why people are supporting Joe Manchin more now. But either way, his approval rating is up 16% uh, just in the last maybe, what, 14, 15 months or so. So yeah, that's a pretty big jump right there. All right, so one more thing I want to point out here as well, and this is a little bit, um, I don't know, alerting that we need to watch here very closely. So apparently the, um, the demand for truckers right now is at a two-year low. Yeah, sounds kind of weird, right? Considering just in the last, what, maybe month or so, we've been talking about how there's a trucker shortage and we need more truckers right now to get all of this product and all the goods and everything we need across the country and onto the store shelves because of the supply chain issues, the whole deal, right? And not only that, a couple weeks ago, even big places like Walmart came out offering starting pay of new truckers, 95 to $110,000 a year for starting pay. Not bad, right? Six figures a year as a starting trucker for um, uh, Walmart. Not a bad salary, right? <laughs> that is a pretty good one right there. Six figures. Not bad. Anyway, that's just all a quick side note. So this report was going on to say that right now, the trucker demand for all of these individuals to kind of basically transport all the goods and uh, products across the country and around the states that we need is at a two year low. The last time that we were at demand for truckers was in July of 2020. So just as we came out of the lockdowns a couple of years ago, um, that is when the demand for truckers was at this same level. Again, basically what does this mean? You might be wondering, okay, what do we really care? Well, we care in a big way. First off, this is a leading indicator into a massive recession that could be coming right here in this country as well as globally. Because if there's less truckers needed, that means that um, producers and manufacturers are basically saying, um, we're producing less, there's less demand for our products and goods, Therefore, we, let, we need less people to move this product, right? So it's somewhat of a leading indicator. And that is exactly what this report was also suggesting is that um, this is probably not a good sign. If this, if this economy and if this country was moving in a pretty good productive way forward, um, we would need more truckers, not less truckers, right? So these people are very, very vital, um, a very important group of people out there. They're the ones who are responsible for basically getting essentially everything to the store shelves that we buy. 
You know, I, I do know that uh, railroads and trains and stuff like this do move a lot of stuff as well, a lot of freight. But at the end of the day, a train does not drive up to the grocery store and drop off a bunch of trailers. No, they don't do that. They drive into a rail yard and they get unloaded and then the semis take it to the final destinations. Or the long haul truckers that drive stuff from, you know, New York to Florida or, you know, vice versa or Texas to Tennessee or, you know, whatever. I'm just making up examples here. But my point is truckers are very, very important when it comes to completing the supply chain, right? So anyway, just another report that I came across and I thought, oh, that's a little bit of an interesting one. We've got to watch that one closely because a shortage of truckers or and or a, um, a diminished demand for truckers is not exactly a good thing, right? So anyway, I guess only time will tell as far as all of this transpires into the future. And uh, of course, I'll be right here breaking it all down, keeping you updated with anything that I find. So again, these are the updates that I have for you as of now. If you haven't done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, share this video with your friends, family, social media, and go back and check out any of the other 2,400 videos right here on the channel. Thanks again. I appreciate you. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you again later in the next video. I'll see you